thank you all on your comments on the FLD Shakedown 25 hours of the 24 hours of Lamar live stream. But it was viewer No Uncle Jesse that nailed his sentiments and mine. Quote, your online show was so entertaining, I didn't even realize that the second Audi wreck had a two hour yellow, end quote. And I was so distracted by doing the live stream, I had no idea how Audi and Corvette won. So I'll share some insights about that today. Of course, if you already know, the view count on this video will be five. But you can stick around for more info on the Hypertech Project 56 that brings Indy and Lamar together for 2012. Time for a six minute shakedown, but only one today, because if you add up the numbers during the 25, I did 250 shakedowns. A couple more weekends like that, and I can catch Derek D in his FLD 1000 record. But a couple of more weekends like that, and my eyes will never again open like Jensen Buttons. Lamar started with a Future of Lamar demo run that included the Nissan Leaf RC, and then the action got faster. In race hour one, Alan McNish crashed the yellow Audi R18. In hour eight, Ferrari driver, because I can't call him a racer, Robert Kaufman helped crash the black R18. Rockefeller's okay if you compare concussion and bruises to not dying. Kaufman was parked by the ACO after realizing they had granted this guy a pro license, and he was on his second only ever night lap of Le Mans when he and the Audi tangled. With Audi odds one versus three factory Peugeot for the next 14 hours, nine time LM champs working on 10 to break their total win tie with Ferrari, Audi, recrafted their strategy. Pug was running low downforce and due to less drag, was showing one lap better fuel economy. This last Audi was the pole winner. So they had the overall speed advantage, but they had to stop for fuel earlier versus the P cars and more times. It's likely Audi back calculated the race to time manage the stops to stay with Pug and to set up for the final sprint to the finish. A five stint run on one set of Michelins shortened Audi pit stops. The final time fuel stop sent Audi out ahead of the Peugeot with fresh tires, the lead, and rumored only enough fuel to just finish. I mean, that last lap was the last lap. In the end, Peugeot could not find a way to beat the lone Audi. So last Sunday, even given all the advantages they had, nothing French, LeBron, or Peugeot could finish strong for a win. Google NBA basketball finals if you're not with me on that joke. Corvette feared the BMW's pole winning speed, but not its durability. So early in the race, BMW was gone. A full course yellow helped the 74 C6R into the lead. The 73 Corvette, not so much. With seven hours to go, 74 crashed. 73 was one lap down to the Ferrari, who was fighting electrics and gearbox fault, but still putting down fast laps. I'll let Corvette program manager Doug Fian pick up the story with the email he sent Shakedown. Quote, we have been in this position many times before. We concentrated all our thoughts, ideas, and efforts into the 73. Not saying winning isn't damn near impossible, but this team has been through it all, together. They know what to do and when to do it. That's what makes them the world's best sports car team, period." End quote. Okay, he's bragging a little bit, but WTF? Milner drove his ass off. Corvette pit stops were nailed. The car was fast, earning Corvette racing its P1. And note that the two factory teams that really needed this win, Audi and Corvette, got it done in both cases with their kids' team. Racing is for the young, despite Schumi's rather fine Canada GP run. And Le Mans is the greatest racing event on the planet, 300,000 fans, 600 million internet and TV viewers, and big auto interest in the race make it so. 55 cars, 165 drivers, and 12 road car brands, if I have my count right, are invited to race and test technologies. And now, the ACO is pushing the tech a notch higher with the open spec Box 65 entry invitation. So, Project 56 was announced, taking the IndyCar Delta Wing that didn't win that chassis runoff and converting it into an LM car under the guidance of designer Ben Bowlby, Highcroft Racing, and Dan Gurney's All-American Racers team, and John Panos of ALMS ownership. This 56 entry need not conform to any Le Mans car class. Project 56 is designed around the optimization of all the factors that have an impact on global energy consumption and car efficiency. Weight is cut significantly, drag reduced 50%, and only a small motor, 300 horsepower, is projected to cut the 3 minute 33 second lap shown here. 
Audis, by comparison, were doing around 325. Bulby's designed Lola LMP cars, like the MGs that raced at Le Mans. Panos entered the first hybrid at Le Mans, the Q9, in 1998. And of course, Dan Gurney won the Le Mans 24 with the great Ford Mark IV in 1967, the last American car to win overall. Hint, hint, Corvette and Ford. Project 56 needs a 1.6 liter turbo from somebody. So which OEM or engine builder do you think should be the one? Another 56 contender is the Courage Technology 012, a 100% electric car fed by batteries that will be changed during pit stops. A third contender is the Green GT, powered by hydrogen, generated by solar panels converting water, exhausting only water vapor. Which makes me wonder when somebody will try steam again. Like this Lear Industries 1969 Vapordyne steam-powered IndyCar. Google it or buy it on eBay and convert it from Indy to Le Mans like Project 56. Hey, maybe Kaufman can drive it, because after his Le Mans 24 performance, he's already under pressure. Next week is the Nürburgring 24. We'll preview it Friday. We'll look at the entry list and, <laughs> oh hell, let me tell you now, we are going to be at the race. A special long form FLD, think FLD 1000, will be the result of our trip. So stay freaking tuned. Wait, another 25 hours for me to stay awake? Ow, we're living in the fast lane, baby.